it appears the United States may have actually solved nuclear fusion. This, if true, is not just a game changer, it's literally a world changer. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in, and it's great to see you. And as you can see, I'm talking pretty quickly right now because, yes, I am extremely excited. Why would you not be? This kind of technology has been on the cusp of being solved now for how long? I don't know. The idea of nuclear fusion was first proposed back in the 1920s. We're looking at 100 years. And it appears as though we might have finally, well, the United States at least, might have finally done it. So why does this matter? And how would it change the world? It's been reported within the last few hours that scientists have made a breakthrough in a $40 trillion nuclear fusion push. Now, for the first time ever, scientists have achieved a net energy gain in fusion tests. Normally, the amount of energy put in exceeds the amount of energy going out, which is pointless. However, this is different. Bloomberg Intelligence has estimated that the fusion market may eventually be valued at $40 trillion US dollars. As the world moves towards net zero emissions, sustainable and affordable power sources are urgently needed by humanity. Now, countries like Australia, we're moving to renewable energy at an incredible pace because, well, we're a massive country. We have a whole lot of desert, a whole lot of land that we don't use. We have plenty of wind and we have enormous amounts of sun. A lot easier for us to transition to renewable energy than many other countries and many other states around the world. As visual capitalist Bruno Venditti says, one of those promising technologies has attracted the attention of governments and private companies like Chevron and Google. Producing energy through nuclear fusion has been a long held ambition for scientists and energy experts and is prominently featured in science fiction novels and movies for decades. The process involves fusing nuclei together, which throws off energy, which could then provide theoretically abundant energy on Earth, or it could just blow all of us up. I mean, seriously, you must have seen the movie, right? Remember the movie with Keanu Reeves called Chain Reaction? Well, that was more based on a combination of fission and hydrogen. But the key point is, it is still a pretty dangerous concept. However, this process could potentially provide an incredible amount of nearly free and completely clean energy. This is exactly what the world needs. Scientists have for decades tried to use nuclear fusion to produce electricity at a usable scale. However, replicating the reaction on Earth is extremely challenging, requiring vast amounts of heat and pressure, potentially leading to catastrophic explosions. So far, they have not yet managed to produce more energy from the reaction than it takes to trigger the reaction. But now, according to three people with knowledge of preliminary results from a recent experiment, US government scientists have made a breakthrough in the pursuit of limitless zero carbon power by achieving a net energy gain in a fusion reaction for the first time. The Federal Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California which uses a process called inertial confinement fusion that involves bombarding a tiny pellet of hydrogen plasma with the world's biggest laser, has achieved net energy gain in a fusion experiment in the past two weeks. Although many scientists believe fusion power stations are still many decades away, the technology's potential is extremely hard to ignore. Fusion reactions emit no carbon, produce no long-lived radioactive waste, and a small cup of the hydrogen fuel could theoretically power a house for literally hundreds and hundreds of years. The fusion reaction the US government at the US government facility produced about 2.5 megajoules of energy, which is about 120% of the 2.1 megajoules of energy in the lasers. The people with knowledge of the results said that adding that the data was still being analyzed, but this means it created a significant net gain. It wasn't like a tiny net gain. It was a significant result. 
The US Department of Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm and Undersecretary for Nuclear Security Jill Ruby will announce a major scientific breakthrough at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory on Tuesday. If this is confirmed, we are witnessing a moment of history, said Arthur Farrell, a plasma physicist whose book, The Star Builders, charts the effort to achieve fusion power. Scientists have struggled to show that fusion can release more energy than is put in since the 1950s, and the researchers at Lawrence Livermore seem to have finally and absolutely smashed this decades-old goal. With global energy demand expected to increase by 47% in the next 30 years, and renewables like wind and solar being intermittent and sometimes needing a baseload source of clean energy to supplement them, fusion when, not if, commercially implemented, will deliver clean, abundant, reliable, and cost-competitive energy. And for those of you wondering, Fusion, have we already solved that? Well, yeah, kind of have, but it differs from fission. And the current technique used in nuclear power plants, in which the atomic nucleus splits into pieces rather than fusing it with another nucleus. It's an entirely different thing. Now, the current facility in California, the LLNL fusion facility, is made up of nearly 200 lasers the size of three football fields that are used to bombard a tiny spot with high levels of energy in order to start a fusion reaction. So a nuclear fusion is a reaction in which two or more atomic nuclei are combined to form one or more different atomic nuclei and subatomic particles, neutrons or protons. The difference in mass between the reactants and products is manifested as either the release or absorption of energy. The differences in mass arise due to the difference in nuclear binding energy between the atomic nuclei before and after the reaction. Nuclear fusion is a process that powers active or main sequence stars and other high magnitude stars where large amounts of energy are being released. A nuclear fusion process that produces atomic nuclei lighter than iron 56 or nickel 62 will generally release energy. These elements have a relatively small mass and a relatively large binding energy per nucleon. Fusion of nuclei lighter than these release energy, while the fusion of heavier nuclei results in energy retained by the product nucleons. And the resulting reaction is endothermic. What does endothermic mean? Well, an endothermic reaction generally leads to an increase in the temperature of the system and a decrease in that of the surroundings around it. In other words, the heat's drawn into it and, the, and away from everyone else. Now that wouldn't be very useful, of course. But the opposite is true for the reverse process called nuclear fusion uses lighter elements such as hydrogen and helium, which are in general more fusible, while the heavier elements such as uranium and plutonium are more fissionable. The extreme astrophysical event of a supernova can produce enough energy to fuse nuclei into elements heavier than iron. People often talk about nuclear fusion in regards to the stars. An important fusion process is the stellar nucleus that powers stars, including the sun. In the 20th century, it was recognized that the energy released from nuclear fusion reactions accounts for the longevity of stellar heat and light. The fusion of nuclei in a star, starting from its initial hydrogen and helium abundance, provides that energy and synthesizes new nuclei Different reaction chains are involved, depending on the mass of the star, and therefore the pressure and temperature in its core. In 1920, Arthur Eddington anticipated the discovery and mechanism of nuclear fusion processes in stars in his paper, The Internal Constitution of the Stars. At that time, the source of stellar energy was unknown, and Eddington correctly speculated that the source was fusion of hydrogen into helium liberating enormous energy according to Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. This was a particularly remarkable development since at that time fusion and thermonuclear energy had yet to have even been discovered. Not even the stars, not even that stars are largely composed of hydrogen. Eddington's paper made some incredible discoveries that at the time people didn't really believe because we didn't understand what was actually going on. 
but it seems as though Eddington himself did. In fact, all of his speculations were proven correct in the following decades. The primary source of solar energy, and that of similar sized stars, is the fusion is the fusion of hydrogen to form helium, which occurs at a solar core temperature of 14 million Kelvin. The net result is the fusion of four protons into one alpha particle. With the release of two positrons and two neutrinos, which changes two of the protons into neutrons and energy. In heavier stars, the CNO cycle and other processes are more important. As a star uses a sub upper substantial fraction of its hydrogen, it begins to synthesize heavier elements. The heaviest elements are synthesized by fusion that occurs when a more massive star undergoes a violent supernova at the end of its life, a process known as supernova nucleosynthesis. If the United States has truly discovered how to make this happen, a nuclear fusion with a net positive energy result has in fact been achieved, then this certainly signals the dawn of a new era. This is truly the definition of cheap and abundant energy. I, for one, believe this is an incredible discovery, the likes of which have really no peer over the last 100 years of human civilization. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.